Welcome to the Money Over 50 podcast, brought to you by Dallas Davison and Michael Hogue from Money Over 50 Financial Advisors. This information is general in nature and does not take into account your objectives, financial situation, or needs. Therefore, you should consider whether the information is appropriate for you and your personal circumstances. If you require personal advice, please contact Money Over 50 Financial Advisors. Here are your hosts, Dallas Davison and Michael Hogue. Welcome to Money Over 50 with Dallas and Michael. Dallas, case study today. Um, you're going to talk about the risks of commercial property in retirement. Thanks, Michael. I am. I am. I actually just just held this meeting with a prospective new client. As the way that I just said that, sorry, mate. The way that I just said that, yeah. I pictured myself walking down the street as a retiree and all these commercial <laughs> properties with, with big hammers <laughs> like gonna, trying, to, trying to belt me, like exactly whack a mile. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, like the, way that is the, risk, the risk of commercial re- of property as a retiree. So, yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's, not, it's not like you know you having a slip and fall in a shopping center. This, yeah. this is you owning commercial property as, as the thing that you, you know, that, that you draw an income from in yes. retirement. So, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll plant the, not plant the seed, I'll paint the, paint the picture of uh, these, these guys. Uh, Really nice couple um, that uh, just had a really good meeting with with them to to discuss their situation. There it was a fairly simple one in in many ways. So they have uh, they have about a hundred thousand dollars worth of um, shares in their own name. Yep. They've got two hundred thousand dollars in a in an, in an industry fund in a uh, Australian retirement trust mm. um, super fund in one of their names. And then they've got a million dollars in a self-managed super fund, which is a small cash balance, and the remainder in a, a commercial property, so a, a factory, actually down in down in Victoria. Um, so essentially, what happens with these guys is they they rent the factory out. They they get their they get their rent every week. It you know flows through into the, the self-managed super fund bank account, and then they draw an income out of that. Yeah. Yep. There was there was actually all sorts of other weird and wonderful financial planning strategies that, that we looked at around, you know, and, and we talked significant, you know, in great detail about um, all sorts of other planning questions. But essentially for these guys, I boiled it down to it, it's sort of relatively simple. The, the big picture here is relatively simple, which is that they've got $1.3 million in retirement savings right now and they're currently living on about fifty grand a year, but they want to go and they want to get back and do mm-hmm. some more travel. Um, they've got a caravan they like to trip around with, so they they want to spend about sixty five thousand dollars a year, which is bang on what I would probably recommend. As we've talked about, mm-hmm. you want about twenty times that first year's income in retirement. So mm-hmm. one point three million, drawing sixty five thousand dollars a year out of that is is um, fairly sustainable, um, assuming that you've got your asset allocation. Right, and, and make sure that that money is, as long as you've got your your retirement savings, getting dressed and going to work for you, Michael. I'll say it Thanks, Dale. So it's <laughs> taking you a long <laughs> time to say that. Save yeah. your job. So, what we talked about here with these guys is that of their one point three million dollars, currently they've got a hundred thousand dollars in 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 direct shares in their own name. Of the two hundred thousand dollars that's in the in the industry super fund, it's probably you know about about a half to two thirds in in companies, and then the remainder of it in cash. So say half and half. Mm. So probably another hundred thousand dollars worth of shares and a hundred thousand dollars worth of cash. Inside the self managed super fund, they had about yeah, you know, I think it's about twenty thousand dollars and fifty thousand dollars worth of cash, and nine hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars, which was the latest valuation of this this factory, this this property that they're renting out. Yep. So. Um, what I thought was a, an interesting window into this with people, because I've had similar meetings in the past, is that what was interesting is that they were the first people that I've had a meeting with that owned a commercial property as their main income source in retirement that immediately saw the risks of that. Yeah, so they, they saw the risks themselves. They, they? They, they, they came so, in and so, said, this is what we're worried about. And yeah, so... so- so these people, um, just to let the listeners know, they they actually they live in our area. Yes. And um, correct me if I'm wrong. They they searched via Google, yep, I assume. Just, yep. They just found us and okay. uh, come across our website. Yep. And um, 
and 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 booked a yeah a, a, a meeting a paid meeting yep with um with with yourself yes and yep. you've just conducted that meeting with yes them. that's right so, and so they brought that to you they brought that to you the which, which the, was really interesting to discuss yes. the yep. the risk of of under diversification well so so they, they basically there are, there were sort of two main risks um, that that they could sort of see which is what I kind of agreed with the first one is that pretty much all of their income in retirement is linked to one not just one asset class but one asset in one location with mm. one tenant so they've got a factory while ever the business that operates that that factory mm. is is profitable and is is doing reasonably well they can keep paying the rent and while they're paying the rent they're they're, mm. they're making money and everything's all good however they they sort of said our our concern is that what happens over the long term if either a you know that tenant stops paying the rent and, and they have a, a lean you know a lean business period where they can't pay can't afford to pay their rent or that business decides to mm. go and move somewhere else and so yep. they've had this property since 2003 and in that time they've it, it's been vacant three times they've had three mm. different tenants and so they were with a bit of experience they were well aware of the fact that if we're living on that, so they're sort of getting about a thousand bucks a week in the hand from that from that rent. Mm-hmm. They said we're sort of on not on the bread line, but we need that thousand dollars every week to live on. Mm. If that tenant stops paying the rent, that, that that's too big of a risk, and 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 it's too big of a risk ju- not just if that tenant doesn't pay the rent, but what if we can't find another tenant to move into that factory? Or you know, y- y- that, so that's yeah, that look, sort of the first risk. Yeah, abs- look, absolutely. Um, the the rent from commercial property is very very consistent and very very stable until it isn't exactly <laughs> um, and it's really an all or nothing play yes uh, and and if you look at historically the yields on and what I mean by the yield is the percentage of the value of the property that's paid in rent yeah. they've for commercial have always been higher than residential yeah always yeah. so you own a million dollar yeah. Factory. Uh, factory. Yeah, you are always after, after all costs they're getting going to get a higher amount of rent yep. from the factory commercial yep. property yep. than you are from a million dollar residential house. Yes. Now the reason for that, one of the reasons for that, mm-hmm. is that commercial properties stay vacant for vastly longer periods of time. Yep. So with residential property, you've got a pool of 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 so many people yep. that are looking to rent a house at any point in time. Yep. With things like a factory, it's a very niche market. It is. So th- those things stay untenanted for sometimes years on end. And um, I can see what they're, they're concerned, yeah. um, uh, which is rare. It's yes. rare. People don't usually walk in concerned no. about those things. No. They say, oh, I'm getting $50,000 a year in rent as if it's going to turn up yes. week in, week out forever. Yep. Yeah. So that was the, f- the first risk which which they sort of nailed. And... Um, and, and, you know, that risk, and, and I guess the point with all this, and I'll, I'll explain the other risks and then discuss this. None of these, none of these risks are insurmountable. Like they can't, no. it's not that they can't be conquered. It's just that I thought it was an interesting window into they know what the, what the potential downsides are here. So the other big one they spoke about was, um, was liquidity. So if that $1,000 a week doesn't turn up for whatever reason, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the, the factory is, is vacant or the, the tenants can't pay the rent, or whatever, they they can't sell a portion of the factory. They can't they can't sell the car park. You know what I mean? Or, no. or alternatively, even if the tenant is paying the rent and they're paying a thousand dollars a week, and something happens, and these guys need to get access to thirty thousand dollars to replace their caravan that they just rolled, mm. they can't go and sell the car park, or they can't sell the office of the factory, or they can't sell the the, the male toilets or the female toilets. It's all or nothing in that way as well. Is that they've got a million dollar asset, but if they needed twenty thousand dollars, they have to sell the million dollar asset to get the extra twenty thousand dollars they need. They can't. Mm. You can't go to the tenant and say, "Hey, can you can you pay twenty grand worth of worth of rent in advance?" No. I mean, you can try, but it's probably not going to go too well. Well, that's an interesting point because you look at the position of the tenant versus the position of the CEO that runs the yeah. companies that you own. Yeah. Uh, if you're comparing to different asset classes here. Yeah. So the tenant of your factory is only interested in themselves. Yes. So the second that a, a cheaper factory becomes available, yeah, they're gone. 
they're gone. Yeah. <laughs> um, whereas the CEOs of the as a shareholder companies as shareholders he is beholden to you. Look, their 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 remuneration is always tied yeah. to um, how well they do. Yes. So if I'm going on holidays and drive around in my caravan, yeah. Um, I'd rather have. So, I'd rather wake up every morning going, I've got my money in the hands of yeah. maybe not the best, but but let's say 1,700 great, good quality management yeah. teams and CEOs around the world yeah. versus one tenant yeah. whose who's, who's only interest, and rightfully so, yeah. is in themselves. It's, it's, it's not yeah. in you. Yep, that's exactly right. So, yeah, that's that's a good point is, is that, that you know, in, incentives being aligned is that if you – because that's, I guess, the part of it is if the tenant does too, if the tenant, if the tenant's business does really poorly, then they're going to not be able to pay the rent. If if the business does fantastically well, they're probably going to leave as well and go to mm. move to a bigger factory or to yeah. know, bigger premises or whatever it is. So, it's kind of the only way to have that tenant stay around for the next for the thirty years of your retirement is if they are the perfect fit for the exact factory that you have and they remain the exact perfect fit and mm. no market forces, no external conditions change that changes their business model and, and nothing else changes in the management team and nothing else changes. It's a pretty big risk that you're running there to assume that, as you say, it, it's. I think there's the illusion of safety because you've got a 1000 bucks a week, turns up every week, and yep. like you say, until it doesn't. And then when it doesn't, then it's panic stations. And so I was, I was actually sort of impressed that these people could... They, they very, with no real um, investing background, they could very quickly put their finger on that's this mm. is the risk that we're at here. Look, it's not to say it's a terrible investment, but for me, I always liken it back to the simple, the simple, uh, uh, I guess equation, mm. is that the 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 best companies, not even the best, the top two hundred or the top three hundred or the top five hundred companies in Australia, whatever number you want to you want to choose, yeah. and around the world. They have always been able to afford the rent. Yeah. So they, they rent these properties. Yep. And they've always been able to afford that rent. Yep. Now, should their profits be less, should the should the rent grow at a faster rate than the profits of yep. those companies, those companies are going out of business. Yep. It's only a matter of time. Yes. Those companies have, haven't gone out of business. No. And there have been some, of course, yep. but we're talking about collectively there's other companies moving up and take their place. Yeah. The profits of those companies set the rents. Yeah. So, yeah. so it can't be the other way around. Exactly. Like, like, like it, it, you just cannot – yeah, you can have pockets, of course, where yeah. where that property price has grown for what are other reasons that has, has done really well. But if you look at it across the board, it just cannot be any other way. The profit – like the rents of commercial properties mm. and the cannot, returns of commercial – cannot be more, by more than the, by more than the growth of profit. Than the growth of the profit of those – deep, diverse uh, institutions that we know as, as companies. That's a good point because the, the other part of it is that you're um, – I, I, we, we know a, um, a, a good mate of ours that owns a lot of um, commercial property and has mm. – so he's managed, he's managed his risk of owning commercial property by owning a lot of properties in different areas mm. and different um, – you know, has different tenants and the rest of it. When COVID hit, the, the theoretical rent that he was getting every week, every tenant that he had just went, I'm not paying the rent. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's interesting. I was just thinking about that where you go, if you own a commercial property, you don't get to share in the upside. So when the company's no. booming, they don't go, oh, here we go. Here, we'll pay, we'll pay some extra yeah. rent. When, the, when the, 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 the stuff hits the fan, as it did during COVID, every, every tenant of every commercial property just went, Hang on, mm. we, we want a moratorium on our rent. We don't want to pay rent for the next six months. You yeah. go and take it up with your bank when we're, we're not paying. And yep. and if you try and kick us out, then who else are you going to get to fill our spot? So yeah. you've sort of got all the downside risk of, of those market conditions and you know yep. business risks and business going bankrupt and downsizing and upsizing and the rest of it. But you don't get to share in the upside. So you, you, you're you capping your upside at that $1,000 a week. Mm. But if things change, you kind of have to take, take a haircut. On the yeah, way down look, absolutely. So yeah, I mean, that's... We've talked about this. Um, yes. Yeah, so, so besides the point that we just made, all the points that we just made, there, they're getting back to their situation. Yeah. Um, and speaking more about their situation, it's mm-hmm. it's it's just it's they're very real risks of yeah. under diversification, That's, illiquidity to, yeah. to name two yeah. under diversification and illi- illiquidity. Yes. And that's that's two exactly really big risks. The conversation we had was, you know. So you've got this million dollars tied up in this commercial property. Um, you can see that it, it's not. 
it's a real risk to have it tied up in that one property. Your options are essentially to either, you, I said, you, you basically you could sell that and go and buy three residential properties, for example, mm. because then you don't have as much risk of that vacancy or, you know, if, if your tenant does leave, you're probably going to be easier to find that. If yeah. you've got three different properties, then you can, you know. Look, you have a, you have another problem there called an income problem. Yes. Uh, well, that's, that's, that's not going to pay you enough income. <laughs> that, was the, that was the point, is it? Yeah. If, if I'd go and do that, I either then go and try and, I go and try and find three properties that pay me a, a high yield, i.e. commercial property, or I go and buy three residential properties, mm-hmm. they're not going to pay me the income that I need. So no. it doesn't solve my, solve my problem in, in that way either. Mm-hmm. So where we got to, as, as we often do in these conversations with people about their retirement savings, it was really funny because the, the, they, were, they, were, they were good value, these guys. I sort of said at the start of the meeting, they said, we, we, we don't really know what we need. To, we know these are the risks. We don't really know what we need to do to manage it. Mm-hmm. And I sort of said, I know what you need. I know what you probably need to do or what you probably should do, but you're not going to like it, which is that you should have a million dollars invested in, in shares. And yeah. they went, oh, no, I don't want to do that. It's gambling. It's risky. It's, and I went, and then after an hour, an hour and a half of, okay, let's go back to square one. What is it that you actually need to achieve? We need a rising income stream over time. We have 1.3 million. We need $65,000 a year. Our $65,000 a year, those expenses are going to go up over time with inflation. Mm. We need that to, we need our retirement savings to be able to continue to grow in the early years of retirement so we can draw that extra income out. Okay. To do that, we can't have that money invested in property because of the risks that we've just discussed. We can't have it sitting in cash because we're not going to get the return we need and we're going to run through that. Ipso facto, we are left with the one asset class which you didn't want to hear about, which unfortunately, that's that's the answer that I've got for you. Yep. And and that's that's what I what I would probably recommend that you do. Mm. And so it, it was really interesting because for once I started, I started with the end in mind and then just, I think just to play around with different ways of discussing this, I said, yep. I'm going to end up here in an hour and 15 minutes yeah. and, and you're not going to like it, but you'll at least understand why there's the case. Look, we, we have no skin in the game. Our fees don't change regardless no. of whether, yeah. you know, someone's invested into property or if they're no. invested into 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 companies. Yeah. Um, um, so, you know, I think sometimes people think we arrive at that decision too quickly. Mm. It's just that we've considered it so many times yeah. and we've run through those considerations without yeah. verbally going through and, yeah, and, yeah. And, and saying, okay, well, cash work for you. Yeah. No, well, you can't have everything yeah. in cash because a yeah. million dollars in, in cash is going to pay you an income of $3,500 yeah. yeah. uh, to $5,000 a year. Yeah. Um, obviously, that's not going to make it yeah. uh, the property for the stated reasons yeah. um, aforementioned is yeah. is we don't think the best. Mm. Um, what are we left with? We're left with we're left with pro- productive enterprise. We look at we're, we're left with companies that take something and add value to it and charge a premium for it and therefore make a profit for it. Yeah, and uh, and, and grow the value of their of yeah. their enterprise over time, at which we get to benefit from. Yeah, they're deep and diverse, as in we can be diversified. It, it's it's really um, it's more than this, but you gain significant diversification by spreading your money, let's say, across the mm. 1,700 companies in Australia and around the world. Um, uh, and and your interests are in, aligned with the people who are in control of those companies mm. because um, they all want to see success yeah. because their jobs are hinged to it yeah. versus um, someone that you're lending money to, yeah. as in... A term yeah. deposit at a yeah. bank. They're just going. They're all they're interested in is paying you yeah. pittance to on lend that money at a higher rate. Yeah. Uh, or or, or the tenant, landlord. or yeah. the tenant. Yeah. Uh, if you're a landlord, like so, their interest is always in retaining the rent yeah. as low as possible. Yep. Yeah. And moving on when it suits them. Yep. Yeah. So uh, yeah, w- w- why we bang the table? Yeah. Continually about. Uh, Good quality companies is we just know of no better way, yeah. no, no better way to be diversified, no better way to to get that growing income stream. That's, and, that's and, a, and a really a, a good. I, th- I hadn't really thought about that about the concept of your your rent. We love we love we love nice neat things as human beings like that. Oh, that thousand bucks a week in rent, we love that. But mm. it, it's you can't trust it because because by its nature, if mm. I'm if I'm the owner of the business that's operating that factory, I'm seeing that thousand dollars every week as 
I wish there was a way to shave to, this. To shave this, yeah. Got to, you know, I'm I'm responsible to my shareholders. Hmm. I, I want to be on the side of the shareholders who own the business, and I want to be putting pressure on the owner of that fact of, of that business to go. Hey, can we get cheaper rent somewhere? Can we get a better facility for the same amount of rent? Can we? Can we expand in some way and move on and, and set up in a bigger factory that's going to be able to make us more profitable? I'd, I'd rather be on that side of things than than to be on the side of the landlord who's closing one eye every week as a check of bank and going, mm. yep, the rent came the in this week. Came okay, in, yeah. great, yeah. fantastic. Or, or waiting for every phone call from, from the agent or from the tenant going, hey, we're moving on or we're not renewing our lease or, or yeah. whatever the case may be. So that's a, a, a good way to think of it. Thank you for listening to the Money Over 50 podcast with Money Over 50 Financial Advisors. For more information and resources, visit the Money Over 50 website, mo50.com.au. We look forward to catching up again soon.